meet the classic Hollywood actor stepping into the shoes of a tough private investigator in the 1971 TV series. If you're a fan of gripping crime dramas with a touch of humor, you're in for a treat. This show has it all funny moments that'll have you laughing out loud, shocking twists that'll leave you on the edge of your seat, and heart-wrenching scenes that might just bring a tear to your eye. So, who was your favorite classic Hollywood actor in this series? As you dive into the episodes, keep an eye out for those memorable performances that stand the test of time. Was it the charisma of the lead actor or the compelling portrayal of supporting characters that captured your heart? The cast is filled with talent, and we're sure you'll have a tough time picking just one favorite. Now, here's a heads up. There are plenty of interesting facts about the making of this series that you won't want to miss. From behind-the-scenes anecdotes to trivia about the cast, there's something for everyone. So, keep watching and let us know your thoughts. We're curious to hear about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the series. Drop your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, the more, the merrier. Get ready for an entertaining journey down memory lane with this classic TV series. Your favorite classic Hollywood actor might just surprise you with their unforgettable performance. Enjoy the ride. The television series Canon, produced by Quinn Martin Productions in the 60s and 70s, featured William Conrad as its star. The short, rotund actor portrayed a detective discharged by the police due to his weight. And despite this setback, he consistently outsmarted law enforcement agencies, solving cases they had abandoned. Known for his distinctive voice and prior role as the original Matt Dillon on the radio series Gunsmoke, Conrad brought his skills to the small screen. Before canon, he had a successful career as a character actor and off-screen narrator in various films and TV shows. The series was tailored to his physical stature, incorporating his culinary skills, occasional prickly temperament, and childlike joy of solving puzzles. Despite living in a beautiful apartment, he spent most of his time behind the wheel of his sedan, rushing to handle cases requiring his unique abilities. Featuring a lively theme song with a tuba nodding to his girth, the show had a lighter tone compared to other detective series of its time. Although less intense than other shows like Mannix or Barnaby Jones, it still provided opportunities for his character to use his fists and engage in occasionally implausible foot chases. Despite later success in another detective series, Jake and the Fat Man, Conrad's portrayal of the character in canon remains his most beloved role, continuing to find popularity in syndication. Against the backdrop of canon episodes, a distinctive blue Cadillac Coupe de Ville with a white top makes frequent appearances, strategically positioned near the detective's car or nestled in driveways and streets. This recurring visual element subtly underscores the series, offering a consistent presence that complements the unfolding detective narrative. The iconic canon melody, played predominantly by the tuba and or trombones in the main title and background music, cleverly mirrors the substantial physicality of the titular character. The composer ingeniously weaves this musical motif, a nod to his girth, into the fabric of the series. It serves as a thematic thread, reinforcing the character's larger-than-life persona, both literally and metaphorically. Adding depth to the audio landscape, a low-pitched wind instrument, potentially the tuba, serves as a leitmotif in many scenes. This deliberate choice unmistakably alludes to the detective's weight, portraying him as a deliberate and unhurried investigator. The sound of this instrument echoes throughout the series, offering a sonic reminder of his deliberate, methodical approach to solving cases. In essence, these recurring visual and auditory elements contribute to the unique charm of the show, providing subtle cues that enrich the viewer's experience. The blue Cadillac and the distinctive musical themes become integral components of the series, enhancing the portrayal of the character and adding layers to the storytelling. With its attention to these details, the show sets itself apart in the realm of detective series, offering a distinctive blend of visual and auditory cues that complement the narrative without overpowering it. It's a testament to the thoughtful craftsmanship behind the scenes, creating a memorable viewing experience for audiences. In numerous episodes of the TV series, Frank Cannon's trusty Cannonmobile displayed the license plate 963 XUJ, though on occasion it switched to 825 DQI. This subtle detail adds a touch of consistency to the unfolding detective narrative. The pilot, which hit the screens in March 1971, stood out with a distinct two-hour format. 
Unlike regular episodes, it featured altered opening graphics and omitted the customary cast and title voiceover. This deviation set the tone for the series and marked its initial foray into the world of television. Interestingly, Viacom Enterprises, the show's longtime distributor, found itself in possession of the U.S. TV rights to numerous films produced by Canon Films. This coincidental connection further intertwines the legacy of the TV series with the broader landscape of film distribution during that era. In the backdrop of the show's episodes, a distinctive blue Cadillac Coupe de Ville, adorned with a white top, frequently appeared. Positioned strategically near the detective's car or nestled in driveways and streets, this recurring visual element subtly underscored the series, offering a consistent presence that complemented the unfolding detective narrative. The iconic canon melody, predominantly played by the tuba and or trombones, cleverly mirrored the substantial physicality of the titular character. This musical motif became a thematic thread, reinforcing the character's larger-than-life persona, both literally and metaphorically. A low-pitched wind instrument, potentially the tuba, echoed throughout the series, serving as a sonic reminder of the detective's deliberate, methodical approach to solving cases. These recurring visual and auditory elements became integral components of the series, enhancing the portrayal of the character and adding layers to the storytelling. The blue Cadillac and the distinctive musical themes offered subtle cues that enriched the viewer's experience, contributing to the unique charm of the show. In summary, with attention to such details, the series set itself apart in the world of detective shows. It offered a distinctive blend of visual and auditory cues that complemented the narrative without overpowering it, creating a memorable viewing experience for audiences. Amidst the engaging tales of his detective escapades, a poignant trivia fact surfaces, casting a shadow over the series. Behind the scenes, William Conrad, the stalwart actor embodying the detective, faced a personal tragedy during the show's production. In an unfortunate turn of events, a close relative, a sibling, passed away unexpectedly during the filming of one of the episodes. This somber incident added a layer of melancholy to the series as Conrad continued to deliver his compelling performance while grappling with the weight of a personal loss. As the series unfolds, the distinctive blue Cadillac Coupe de Ville, a constant companion to our investigator, assumes a silent yet significant role in the narrative. Positioned strategically in various scenes, this visually recurring element subtly reinforces the character's presence and adds a consistent backdrop to the unfolding detective stories. The blue Cadillac becomes an unspoken witness to the challenges and triumphs that define his journey. In the auditory landscape of the show, the iconic melody, predominantly played by the tuba and or trombones, weaves a sonic tapestry that mirrors the substantial physicality of the detective. This musical motif, deliberately chosen to resonate with his larger-than-life persona, becomes a thematic thread that echoes throughout the series. Additionally, a low-pitched wind instrument, likely the tuba, serves as a sonic reminder of his deliberate and unhurried investigative approach, contributing to the unique charm of the show. The license plate of his trusty Canamobile, bearing the numbers 963 XUJ and occasionally switching to 825 DQI, may seem like a subtle detail. However, this consistent element adds a touch of coherence to the unfolding detective narrative, subtly emphasizing the meticulous attention to detail within the series. The pilot episode, breaking away from conventional norms with its distinct two-hour format, laid the foundation for the distinctive style, setting it apart from its contemporaries. In an intriguing twist of fate, Viacom Enterprises, the longtime distributor of the show, found itself holding the US TV rights to numerous films produced by Canon Films. This unexpected connection intertwines the legacy of the TV series with the broader landscape of film distribution during that era, adding a layer of intricacy to its historical context. Despite its departure from the intense nature of contemporaneous detective series, the show endures as a testament to William Conrad's acting prowess. In later ventures, such as Jake and the Fat Man, he would find success, but his portrayal of the iconic detective remains a standout, resonating with audiences through syndication. The series, with its nuanced visual and auditory elements, offers a distinctive blend that enhances the portrayal of the character without overshadowing the narrative. Each recurring detail, from the blue Cadillac to the distinctive musical themes, contributes to its unique charm, providing audiences with a memorable viewing experience that transcends the passage of time.